This is Megan. Hey there, Megan. Hey. She's about to be one of the world's newest grinders, people who biohack their bodies with implants for extra human abilities. So are you ready? I am ready. Okay, let's do this. And Seattle biohacking pioneer Emil Grafstra is the man with the steady hands implanting this. Oh, there it goes. A chip for radio frequency identification, or RFID. Deep breath in. That's it. Wasn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any wincing on your face. <laughs> okay. Megan is now one of a small but growing group of people embarking on high tech upgrades. Why? I have a belief that most things in life are improvable and that it's our responsibility to act on that improvement. This is one thing you could do keyless home entry. Emil? He's been biohacking himself the past 10 years. He shows off scars from past experiments. Today, he's got two RFID chips you can see through his skin. About when you there. do that, you can actually see it quite well. And as founder of Dangerous Things, he sells do-it-yourself hacker kits. He sold a few thousand, he says, with interest from the U.S. to Sweden and Japan, and thinks big-name tech has bought samples to learn from. Samsung, Google, Apple, I'm sure there's a lot of Skunk Works programs in these companies that are looking at implantable devices like this. Emil can also do this. A magnet in his pinky has given him a sixth sense, feeling magnetic fields. There. Can I feel it? Give it a good... Oh, there it is. It's also given him surprises. He gets a little jolt when walking through metal detectors, feels a microwave when it's on, and because his laptop lid has magnets... If I just let my finger drift a little bit, it'll turn off the MacBook. But pros outweigh cons, says Emil, and he estimates three to 5,000 people in the U.S. are grinders. Like Neil Harbison, the world's first person with an antenna implanted in his skull. Born colorblind, he now sees colors. Rich Lee has small magnets implanted just outside his ear canal to listen to music. And Stephen Mann, dubbed the world's first cyborg by many, has worn a computer vision system for more than three decades. Debbie Chatra, biohacking expert, says time leads to acceptance. It's pretty easy to imagine that some of the technologies that are totally, you know, blue sky ideas today are going to eventually become sort of accepted parts of who we are, who our bodies are. Into the future, Emil says you shouldn't fear tech in your lives or in your bodies. Education is needed. So if you know about it and you know what's going on and you know how to control it, then there's nothing to be afraid of. Opening doors without keys could be just the start.